Um, yeah. So the wiki is is a web page, um, and to move around, it's like with any web pages. You can click on the links that are on the left under course content. That'll bring up a section. When you click on one of those, there's going to be a, a close, close, up, close others, edit more in the upper right of the middle section, and you can click on the close to close the one that, that is uh, currently open. You can have multiple of them open, and when you close one, the other ones will, will pop up. Um, and, and other than that, basic tabbing, click on tab, open the tabs. There are, oh, we'll see in the, in the next section, there's things called sliders where, where it's the, the yellow or orange box around something. You can click on that and it expands it. Um, within here, you can also use this if you want to, to take your own notes. Uh, if you want to, to make um, additions to something, you would just click on the edit. You can add it. Uh, and like if I were to say edit here, say this is a note, done, and it would show up down here. But then it says last edited was your name. Well, you can change that by going to options and putting in actually your name there. And that'll save it. So if I go back in here and I just add a new line, done. Now it actually says, you know, my name. Um, if you want to do that. Also, notepad. I mean, I'm a big fan of that myself. Close. Those are really the basics for using the wiki. Does anybody have any questions on that? We're going to be using this to, to navigate around the content. Okay. Matt finished copying, so I'm just going to quickly reconnect this to the network so everybody can see what is going on. Okay. Well, while that starts up, any other tools that people like to use for malware analysis, specifically the uh, the reverse engineering or static analysis part of it? X-rays. Oh, yeah. The you mentioned this in the intro to RE course. The X-rays. Deep compiler plugin for Ida Pro, really nice. All that stuff that you had to pseudo code uh, in the previous class, um, you basically use the plugin and say, "Show me the code," and it it does it for you. It's really nice. Uh, if you're going to be, I did some kind of back on napkin calculations, and what I came up with just kind of rough was if you're going to be doing reverse engineering for more than five days out of the year, it's worth getting that in terms of the amount of time that it's going to save you. Which means that if you're working somewhere where you're not going to be like, like I'm talking like full-time reverse engineering, like you're not like you're going to just kind of open up IDA five times a year. If you're just going to like open up IDA five times a year, Mm. Um, but if you're like full on eight hours a day for five days reverse engineering, according to my calculations, it will save you time slash money. If you actually pay for the, the x-rays, it will pay for itself. Okay. Yes, Do you Alex. people use Wink or, uh, or static analysis? Yes, we typically call them crazy. No. <laughs> That's the reaction I was hoping for. No, um, Win WinDebug is a, a good tool, especially if you get into um, some of the, say, uh, rootkit type stuff, um, things that are, that are dealing um, with kernel, kernel debugging. WinDebug is very good about um, parsing structures, uh, those kinds of structures in memory that you're going to see. Um, so it's a, it's a good tool for that. 
what we're going to be going over in this class uh, is not that. It's not that side of things. We're not going to be talking about um, rootkits in this class. Um, things that are, are hooking um, uh, parts of the operating system in order to hide itself. We won't be talking about that. There is a nice rootkit class, however, that yeah, I encourage you to check out. There is no alternative in kernel anymore. It used to be a soft side, but there is a little choice. Ida remote debugging? If you have a GDB kind of stuff and you want to like access the, uh, the OS itself, then, I mean, you can do that, but it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Like, okay. You can you can debug this entire VM by using the GDB stuff and use either remote debugging to connect to that. So it's, why would you do that? Why would you use GDB to debug the internet? What do you mean by GDB stuff? Like VMware has built in GDB stuff like you can connect to VMware and it will expose the GDB interface. That's what IDA remote debugging is actually connecting to. Oh, okay. So you can either use GDB directly or you can use IDA. Same thing. Mm. You have so, to do that if you go down to like the virtual BIOS and rootkits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So so there are uses for WinDebug, just not in this class. Does anyone? Okay, let me go back over here. Ah, yep. Okay, so like I said, PID. Yeah. Um, PID, which we used in the former class. Let me. Uh, let me grab a executable here and just drag it in so I can show you. Yeah, bomb. Oh, that looks familiar. So take a look at this. It identifies, hey, I think this is packed. Uh, other piece of this, the the plugins over here, right click on the, the little arrow, plugins, crypto analyzer. Another very useful piece there. We went over before. Um, PID CFF Explorer. I want to drag and drop in there, and we can see in here that uh, go to identifier, scan, ASPAC, import directory. We see there's there's not a lot here. That's another good indication that something is packed where the imports there isn't a lot. And pretty much old library and get park address is what you see. Good indication that it's packed. Or maybe dot as pack. Well, yeah, there's, yeah, there's that. that. <laughs> there's there's that. Section names. You can't always rely on section names, but at the same time, don't just ignore them. <laughs> Can be useful. Um, resource editor. It's actually got some stuff. So, yeah, that's CFF Explorer. PID, CFF Explorer, good tools. Um, bin text we also put on here, where um, if you drag and drop into that, it's going to, there we go, basically show you the strings. Something you can also get in IDA, um, just provided this additional tool, a uh, little quicker to load it up in, to, to load up the strings in here and see them, than to go through the process of loading it up in IDA if you don't have to do that. Um, and we'll get into these other tools later. <coughs> 